Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron. You're okay. close to the desk, all right? Most of the time, you need me or Minna? Okay. So go ahead and count to 10. Just use your regular voice. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Hey, we're here today at Van Horn Elementary School, home of the Hornets, and today we're here to... Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. We do have phone tutors available on most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. The phone numbers are at the bottom of your screen periodically throughout the program. In Bakersfield, that local phone number is 636-4357. Toll free in San Luis Obispo County as well as other outlying areas. The number is toll free at 1-866-636-6284. There are students that aren't able to view the program exactly when we're on air, so you can always email us a question if you need to. That is do the math at kern.org. Also, you can watch online. A lot of students do that now. Do the math online.net. And as always, we are on a variety of social media programs, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We do have a very special guest in studio with us. We'll be meeting that young lady in a little bit. We'll be going out to Van Horn Elementary once again, visit with the Hornets and Scott and see what kind of mathematics they're working on this afternoon. But before we get to any of that, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. Well, today's Math in the News has to do with something that was on actually, uh, I think it was TV23, and there was actually a Twitter thing going on, social media, discussing how you make an X. Now, I simply thought there was one way to make an X, and you just simply start at the top, and then start at the top and go down. But, let's take a look under the camera, and we can see how many different ways there are to make an X. So, in diagram one, the first line is going from the bottom up, and the second line is going from the bottom left up. So that's how they would make an X. Diagram number two is similar. However, they're starting the first line on the left instead of the right, but both of them are going up. In diagram three, they're starting from the upper right-hand corner going down, and then you can see that number two is going up. Now we keep going, and like I said, I thought there was only one way to make an X, but obviously there's eight different ways. So, diagram number four, they're going up and then down, and you can see the other ways that are happening right there. The way that I do it is the way that is depicted in number seven. So, when we were growing up, when they said, all right, here you guys are going to learn how to make your letters. When you make the letter X, you're going to start up in the upper left-hand corner, go down then go back up to the right-hand corner and go down again. So that way you've got your X. Now, number eight is similar, but they're starting on the right side instead of the left side. So you can see there are a lot of different ways to make an X. So, in studio, and we're not through with the do the math, the math and the news yet, but in studio with us right now, we have Minna. How are you today? I'm good. Why don't you let everybody know where you go to school and what grade you're in? I'm, I go to school at... Douglas J. Miller Elementary, and I'm in sixth grade. And the mascot are the Mustangs? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about your schooling and stuff like that, but what I would like you to do is first go over to the board. Grab one of the markers and just make an X. Okay, so do it again larger, and let's think and see how you're making it. All right, so go ahead and make one no more. Do I erase? You can leave it up there, erase okay. it, doesn't matter. Okay, so you're doing it, so come on back over. Let's take a look at the different graphs that we have right here, the diagrams. And 
if you had to say one of these ways was to make way you make an X, which way would it be? Mm. So you can see them up on the big screen right there. So there's four, five, six, seven, and eight. Maybe seven. You do seven, right? The way yeah. you did that is you started on the upper left, you went down, and then you started on the upper right and went down. Yeah. Did you hear about this story yet? What? It's a story in the news. It was oh. in the news today, how people make an X. Well, you were probably in school all day, right? Yeah. Okay, well, now you know about the news, what's going on. But anyway, that brings me to my next point, okay? So, you're going to need that shape, an X. So, when students learn how to factor a polynomial, such as X squared minus 8X plus 15, one of the skills they need to develop is to find two numbers that can be added to get one number and multiplied to get the other. A diamond problem is made to focus on this skill. The left and right numbers in the problem are the factors, the top number is for the product, and the bottom is for the sum. Have you ever seen anything like this before in the world? Mm, I don't think so. You don't think so. All right. Well, guess what? You're in sixth grade now. Okay. You're going to, and you're going to do a lot of them in seventh and eighth grade. Now, let me ask you if you've seen anything like this. Um, Have you yeah. seen those? So look yeah, at example one, right? So there's the super diamond, right? People that just call them diamonds or whatever. Now, the way that happens is we see that the two numbers on the sides, the three and the five, they add up to make the eight. Mm -hmm. And they multiply, and then you get the product of 15. Okay. So while you're here right now, I have a four and a three. What would go on the top part of that diamond? Seven. Seven. And what would go at the bottom? Twelve. Twelve, right? So you need to do this because what's going to happen is if you start getting good at this, then these problems with the x squared minus 8x plus 15 will be a lot easier when you get there, all okay. right? And that is today's Math in the News. Did you ever think there were going to be eight different ways to make an x? No. I didn't either, but obviously there are. Anyway, once again, thanks to Minna for coming in, and you are at Miller Elementary in sixth grade. How long have you been at Miller? Well, I've been at Miller, I went last year, I started last year. Oh, so that was your first year last year. Mm -hmm. All right. And were you at another school close by and you got moved to that school? Well, I wasn't in the Panama district. Oh, okay. Because I, I know sometimes when they open new schools, they take kids from different schools yeah. and then move them. So you've been there a little over a year. What is the thing that you like most about Miller Elementary? I like my teachers. You like your teachers? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have one or do you guys rotate because you're in sixth grade a little bit? Well, I have one and then I have my music teacher. Oh, okay. And you play an instrument then? Yeah. And what instrument do you play? Clarinet. Clarinet. Do you find that you use any math when you're using and playing your clarinet? Yeah. Can you give us any kind of an example of kind of like how you would incorporate math into music or things that you have to do that would require any math? Well, for the beats like there's rests and they each equal different beats and each measure is equal to four beats or how much beats is in a measure so you have to count how much beats are a note okay and is this your first year with clarinet or your second year second second year so you've got the measures and the beats down pretty well yeah so is this something that you think you're going to continue into seventh grade i want to yeah do you have any idea where you're going to be going? Um, Stone Creek. Stone Creek? Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Now, as far as the math that you guys are doing in sixth grade right now, what kind of math are you doing in class? Um, like, are you guys working on decimals, fractions, probability? We're doing algebra. Well, we're learning how to factor numbers. Can you give me an example? So you have to find the factors of let's say 49. Is no, that what no, you guys no. are doing? No, it's, it's like algebra. So there's parentheses. It's like PEMDAS, yeah. Oh, okay. So you're doing order of operations. Mm -hmm. And you know how to do that pretty well yeah. by now, right? Yeah, but we're learning how to factor them out. Like, yeah. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. When we come back from going out to Van Horn, I'm going to have you give me an example, all right? And we're going to okay. see how you guys are factoring these out. And you know the order of operations already, right? Yeah. So this should not be a problem for you. Have yeah. you been doing a lot of them in class? Well, we kind of started like, like last week, so I'm okay at it.
All right, well, good. Well, then you know what? You can show some other students that aren't okay with it how you can do it, all right? Okay. All right. Hey, just a reminder, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30. Right now, we have an opportunity to go visit the Hornets at Van Horn Elementary with Scott. Hey, thanks. We're here out here at uh, Van Horn Elementary School, and these students are ready to do some math today. So I'm kind of excited. We're going to start with some measurement problems today, and I know that this is something that maybe they haven't worked with so much, but hey, that's why we're here, to learn a little something. So we have a couple conversions that we've done already, and most of the students here have what you need on your board, right? And if you forget, they're on the board up there too. The first thing we looked at is there's 12 inches and one foot, right? Yeah. Got that down. Mm -hmm. The other thing we looked at is there's three feet and one yard, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yep. The last thing we looked at is there's four quarts and a gallon. Mm -hmm. So these are all numbers you need to be able to measure things, whether you're measuring length or whether you're measuring some liquid, right? So here we go. Keep that information on your board, but erase everything else. Here's the problem I'm going to give you. I know you can do this one. You're going to be good at this. Let's say that in my refrigerator, I have seven gallons of milk. Okay? Hello. Seven gallons okay? of milk. I want to know how many quarts of milk do I have in my refrigerator. And I, I know you can get the answer, but I'm waiting for you to be able to show me and explain to me how you do that problem. Okay? So you start off with seven gallons. And I want to know how many quarts are you going to get? And please be able to explain your answer. How many quarts would I have of, of milk in there? Hmm, it's an interesting problem, huh? Well, if nothing else, write down seven. You can write down to seven gallons. It's a good place to start. And it's real similar. I like what you did up here, John. This was a great problem. It's real similar to that problem. Real similar to that problem. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now try the other one. Try the other thing that we did before. Oh, what a wonderful way to do it, Marilyn. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, right? So can you explain a little bit about what you're doing there with all your fours? I'm adding up all the fours till I get seven, and then I'm going to add all of them so I can find out how many. And you have seven, four, seven fours there, right? Yeah, so go ahead and add them up and see what you get. Okay, we'll see if your answer matches someone else who might do the problem a different way. What else? Miguel, what do you got over here? Oh, I like this. Okay, tell me, explain what happens. Just don't tell us the answer yet, okay? Um, I, I, I times seven times four, and because I did it because there's four quarts and it's seven gallons. That's right, times those. That's a good idea. Okay, good. So you got multiplication, we got addition over here. Anybody else got something different that's going on over here? I got multiplication. You got multiplication as well? Yeah. And how did you decide on multiplication, Rero? Because, because you know how... It, how like you add like four to seven? Right. You, you yeah. could just like do seven times four instead of instead of writing it like long. Well, I like the way you said that too because multiplication really is a shortcut for a whole bunch of addition, right? That's a really good way to do it. That's a good way to think about it. Is there one more more way to explain that, Cash? Go ahead. So what I did, I instead of doing fours, um, seven fours. Uh huh. I did wait. No, I like I what know. you did there. Just um, explain what you did. Instead of doing I seven did, fours. I did four, seven, wait, no, I did. Uh, you did a wonderful seven, job seven. here. I like what you did. You wrote it down, seven times four. And instead of writing four, seven times, then you had four, seven. And you still got 28, right? So I see 28 over there. Ramiro got it. Cash got it. I see 28s everywhere, even though we have lots of different ways to do it, right? And that's the wonderful part about math. You don't have to have the same method, but you can have the same answer, all right? Okay, okay. so erase that problem. Challenge number two, here it comes, okay? This is a very similar problem, all right? And this time, we're gonna use feet and yards, okay? So here we go. Football game, right? Yeah, they throw a little pass right down the middle for eight yards, an eight yard pass. You might wanna write that one down, okay? If I throw an eight yard pass, how long was the pass that I threw in feet? It's very similar to what you just did with quarts and gallons. Eight yards, in other words, how many feet are in eight yards? And again, I really want to know how you did it. Got an idea about that one, Max? What are you going to do with that one? You got the eight yards, right? Write that one down. And then you can do some addition if you want to. You can draw a picture if you want to. You can check with someone next to you if you want to. This doesn't have to be a solo thing, but I need you to be able to explain what's going on. Miguel has a good idea. All right, let's see what you got, buddy. Uh, uh... I looked at the three feet, mm -hmm. and, and and why did you look at the three feet? Where did the three come from? Um, th because three feet equals one yard. Ah, so when you heard yards, you looked at the measurement we had up there that had feet and yards in it. Great mm -hmm. idea. 
Okay, and then what did you decide to do with the three feet? At times the eight. Ah, I like eight it. Eight yards. Yeah, that's it. Anybody do this one with addition? Because I like this. Oh, this is our addition side over here. Look at this addition going on over here. Yeah, you got some eights. Anybody get a three? Could you have done this problem with adding threes together? Yeah. How many threes would you add together? Eight, eight. You would add eight of them. That's it. So we're learning slowly today with some measurement stuff that you can do addition, right, with either threes or eights on this problem, or you can do multiplication. There is so much more to do here with our amazing students learning a little bit about measurement, but I know there's also some more to do back in the studio. So we'll come back in the next round and see if we can get these, this crew doing some division of measurement. All right, nicely done. Thanks for that, Scott. Hey, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. We have Mary Lou in studio with us right now. How are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. Nice to see that you're here to help out Minna. Yes. And right now, we're going to go to the phones, though, because we have Caitlin, a sixth grade student from Reagan. How are you today? Hello, Caitlin. Oh, we'll get back to Caitlin in just a moment, but we know she shall return because yes. she calls us every single week. So we'll see what Caitlin's working on. Minute in the meantime, over to the board, young lady. It's time for you to finally do some math. Which pin would you like? Okay. All right, here we go. Julio can walk four kilometers in one hour. I'm going to write down some notes for us, okay? How long does it take Julio to walk 18 kilometers? What do you think? What's your thinking here? Well, so we need to go 18 kilometers, so we want to know so how okay. long it's going to take. That's our total, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so would we divide 60 or, four, or 60 by 4 and then... To find out, why, why do you want to divide? Well, because I want to see how much minutes it takes for one kilometer. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide first. So what you're doing is you're finding um, your units. Mm -hmm. So what is our unit? 15. Okay, so it's 15. So now, well, what do we want to do with that 15? Multiply the 15 and 18. Okay. So, what is your final answer? 270. 270, but what do we need to do though? Is this 270 hours, 270 minutes? What do you think? 27 hours. Is it 27 hours? You have 270, right? Yeah. You transferred everything to minutes, Six. right? Did mm -hmm. you transfer it to kind of minutes there? Yeah. Or you found the units. Because, you, you, right? Mm -hmm. One hour we know equals 60, 60 minutes. minutes. Let's look at this as a proportion. Can we do that? Do you know what a proportion is? Nope. A proportion is two equal fractions. Okay. Okay? We know that we travel four kilometers in one hour. Okay. Okay? We also know that we have 18, we, we travel a total of 18 kilometers. But we don't know how many hours it has taken us. So it's equivalent fractions. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we know that one half is also equivalent to two fourths. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use this same thinking to kind of help us figure this out. What we're gonna do is we can do cross multiply. Okay. Okay. So I can cross multiply this 18 times 1, which That's is 18. 18. And we could go 4 times x, which equals 4x. And now I'm stuck with a one step equation. How do we do this one step equation? How do I find out? Oops, I should put x. Sorry, not k. I apologize. How do I find out what x is? If this is 4 times a number equals 18, 
What's um, the opposite of multiplication? Division. So what should I divide? 18 by 4. Okay, let's do that. Go ahead and do that over here. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. Would I put two fourths? Um, you could put two fourths, but two fourths simplifies to what? One half. But one half as a decimal is what? 0.5. There you go. So we know that if you can go four kilometers in one hour, we can go 18 <coughs> kilometers in? 4.5 hours. There you four go. Hours. That's it. Nicely done. So 270 was correct. But we usually yes. don't go, well, it's going to take 270 minutes, right? Yeah. So we break that into hours and minutes and things like that. All right, hey, we do have phone tutors available until 530. Phone numbers are at the bottom of your screen periodically throughout the program. Right now, we're going to go to the phones, and I do believe Caitlin is with us now. Hello, Caitlin. Hi. And what kind yeah, there we go. Big cheer for Caitlin. What kind of math are you working on today? Um, the homework. Oh, good. So let's hear the problem that you're working on. With Bethy bought three notebooks at 120 each, a box of pencils at 150, and a box of pens at 170. How much did he spend? Okay, um, so one more time. He bought, repeat that one more time for me, Caitlin. He bought three notebooks at 120 each. Oh, each, okay. A box of pencils at 150. Okay. And a box of pens at 170. And so, how, keep going, uh, sorry. How much did he spend? How much did he spend? Okay, so Caitlin, the first thing I see is that the three notebooks, they're each $1.20. What do you think we need to do with that first to figure that out? Uh, multiply them. Multiply it. And he only bought one box of pencils and one box of pins, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so let's write this equation out, okay? We know that he bought three notebooks um, at $1.20 each, correct? Yes. So we have three multiplied by $1.20 like you said. In addition, addition, remember plus, he bought one box of pencils at $1.50 and another addition word, he purchased a box of pens for $1.70. Does that look about right? Do you agree with that equation? Um, yes. Okay, so order of operations, we need to multiply. So let's think about this as three multiplied by 12 because $1.20, let's think of this as 12. What's three multiplied by 12? 36. 36, so how can we turn that into money? What would that be in money? $3.60. Yes, $3.60, okay? Plus our $1.50, plus our $1.70. So let's go ahead and add all of this up. We have our 360, our 150, our dollar 70. Caitlin, help me add this, please. We know all of our zeros are zero. What is six plus five? 11. What's 11 plus seven? 18. Okay, carry our one. One plus three is? Four. Plus one? Five. Plus one? Six. Six. So it looks to me like he spent $6.80 on all of those products. And there you go, is that all of the, of the question? Yes. Okay, there you go. Nicely done. Kaylin, congratulations. A big winner you are all the time when you phone in. You've got yourself a gift card courtesy of our friends at Chick-fil-A, so nicely done. All right, hot shot, you ready to get back to work? All right, clear that board, here we go. Come on. All right, Mikos and Dave. So I don't know if you want to write the names or just the initials Let's or whatever you want to do. M and D. How so Mikos that? and Dave have a total of 49 toys. Okay, I'm going to let you write some stuff up next. Mikos has five more than Dave. Put five more than D. Five. 
more. Oh, put just write more than. How many toys? So the question we want to find out is how many toys does Mikos have and how many toys does Dave have? And that's all the information we get. That's all you get. <gasps> what do you think? So obviously, who has the mo most toys? The M. Okay, the M. He has five more, right? How would you tackle this question? I might divide 49 by 2 and then subtract 5 for him. Okay, mm -hmm. show me, show me your, your work there. So you're going to divide 49. Now, automatically thinking, are you going to get um, a whole number? No. Okay. I'm going to get a remainder. Okay. So, uh, do you want to start with 24 then? Yeah. Okay. And then what do you want to do with that 24? Um, subtract 5. Okay. So, what mentally do that for me? What's 24 minus Nin 5? 19. Okay. So, if you're telling me that, what was the D? Dave. Yes, Dave. Okay. So, you're telling me Dave has 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm-hmm. And Mikos, Mikos would have how many? 24. Okay. Add those up. Does that equal your 49? No, because there's a remainder. There's a remainder. So what do we need to do? How can we play with these numbers? We could uh, have a decimal. Kay. Can you have half a toy? Pardon me? Oh, yeah. Can we, you can't oh, have half yeah. a toy. Right. Can we jump up to maybe 25 here? Yeah, rounding. Round it up. So if we jump this to 25, then this becomes what? What? 20. Okay. What does that equal? That equals 45. Okay, 45. We're not there yet, are we? So what are we doing here? Are we doing a guess and check? No. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, estimating. we're doing a guess and check. Okay, so we know we're too low. Yeah. So we need to increase the amount. We need to increase our number. So give so me another number. What do you think? I'll let you keep writing. Oh, you can leave that there. That's okay. Okay. What's another number then? 30. Okay, try 30. If that's 30, then that has to be? 30? 25. 25, there you go. So what's 30 plus 25 though? 55. Is that too much? Yeah. So we know that the number has to fall between 25 and 30. Mm -hmm. So what's about halfway between 25 and 30? About 27, okay. 28. Let's try 27, okay? Okay. If this is 27, then this has to be what? Um, 7 minus 5. 2. 2. It has to be 22, 20. right? Uh-huh. So let's see if that works. 7 plus 2 is? 49. Yeah, there you go. So sometimes how you started is perfect. Okay, your thinking was perfect, but sometimes we need to do that guess and check to get us to where we need to go. Okay. And Mike, I think it's 40, uh, it is 27 and 22, correct? Right, that's what we're looking for is how many toys Mikos has and how many Dave has. Yes. So the answers would be 27 and 22. Nicely done, Minna, and hey, for that right we're going to send Minna. you over to our friends at Grillenburger. So congratulations, you've got your options of the entire menu. You get whatever you want on the whole menu. You choose your meal, and we certainly hope you do have an opportunity to go over there. And uh, if you go over, when you go over, if you think of this, when you go over to Grillenburger and you just have your certificate and you go, is Lydia here? All right. Okay. So if you can remember that, ask for Lydia because she loves to do the math and loves to give you guys coupons. So just say hi to her, tell you we're on the program, all right? Okay. Hey, we'll get back to more phone calls and more work with Minna as well as the students from Van Horn, all right after this. Today we're at Del Vista Math and Science Academy, home of the dragons, and we're here to All right, today we're back at Del Vista Math and Science Academy and the kids have been using pattern blocks, taking a look at the different attributes that they have, things that are common, things that are not common amongst them, taking a look at the sizes of the angles, the shapes of them, and things like that. You guys ready for 
a specific task to do now? Yes. All right. So working in your group, the group of three, you're going to get some cards, and you need to look at all of the cards and see if you can make what the eventual goal is. You ready? All right. So let's see. What's your name? Eliza. Eliza. You can pick. Which stack of cards would you guys like to work on? All right, there you go. So those are yours. So take the cards apart, work together in your group, and see if you can solve the problem. Make a row of pattern blocks. Okay, so it says there are a total of eight. Red pieces. Red, green, and blue. So out of the red, green, and blue all together, there's going to be eight. So it's not eight red, eight green, and eight blue. Oh, I get it. You get it now? Yeah. Okay, so out of all of the red, green, and blue, all together there's going to be eight. Not eight of all different colors. So it's not saying how many you need to figure right, it out. Right, you need to figure that out. Okay. Right? That's kind of easy. Four, two, three, six. Okay, you know there are eight blocks. Mm -hmm. Oh, the three, three are the same. As they continue working at Del Vista Math and Science Academy, they're getting closer and closer looking at the clues. So what we're going to do is we're going to help them out a little bit and see if you guys can get this thing set. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. So here's what I want you guys to do. Take a look. I'm going to show you something. All right. And see if this is going to help you out. So did you guys get your row? Yeah. There you go. All right, let's take a quick look at it. All right. So go ahead and start with the first one. According to some math books, a rhombus has four equal sides. Though four pattern blocks have four sides, only three are rhombuses. Okay, so we can keep on going. Go to the next one. The pieces at the ends, ends of the row are not quadrilaterals, but there are two rhombuses in the middle of the row. Okay, so it says that these are not quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals have how many sides? Four. Four, and these don't, so we're good. Next one. A trapezoid is next to the, next to the piece that has the smallest angles. Okay, so there's the trapezoid, and these are the smallest angles, right? Yes. Okay, keep going. The piece on the left has the largest number of acute angles of any piece. The piece on the right has more obtuse angles than any, any other. Okay, so those are more acute and those are more obtuse. So you're good. Keep going. None of the pattern blocks in the row touch each other, and, un and none of the, the shapes are congruent to any others in the row. So none of them are the same, are they? No. No? Do we have any other clues? The two pieces on the left end of the row are both regular. They have equal angles in every corner. So these are all equal, aren't they? Mm -hmm. The angles, okay. Any other ones or is that it? That's, That's it. it, so you guys both satisfied it. There you go, working with pattern blocks and solving a specific task at Del Vista Math and Science Academy. And once again, a big thanks to the staff and students at Del Vista Math and Science Academy. We had a great time out there. We do have phone tutors available. We have Minute in studio. We'll go back to the phones. But first, we're going to go back out live to Van Horn Elementary and visit with Scott. Hey, we're back here at Van Horn Elementary, home of the Hornets. Look at these lovely Hornets we have here today doing some math. Are you ready? Challenge number two or three. Uh, someone's counting for me. Challenge number two. Here we go. Can you draw yourself a triangle? And try to make all the sides about as equal as you can. Looks like those, most of you did that. You got a triangle. Like this? Yep, like that. That's a great triangle. Now, on each side, ready? On each side, I want you to put two yards, okay? Two yards on the left, two yards on the right, and two yards on the bottom. And I really like how you are labeling them, not just two, two yards, right? The first thing I want to ask you to do with this triangle is 
What is the perimeter? How long is it all the way around the triangle? And I want you to label that as well, okay? Don't shout any answers out. I like that, but it's going to be some... Make sure you put the, uh, the measurement on the end of the number. Right? Oh. Yeah, there you go. Think about how you did it. Be prepared to tell me how you did it. I like it. And make sure you label your final answer. Boom. Boom. All right. So we're going to start over here. Matthew, looks like you have an interesting way to do this. Tell me what happened here. Wonderful triangle, two, two, and two. Your answer is six. How'd you get there? Um, so we added this one with this one, and then we added this one with this one to, to equal six. All together. Yep, you added up the sides. And that's a great way to do... Uh, perimeter, right? Ramiro right next to him gets the same answer, right? You got six. I see your six yards here, but you didn't do addition. What'd you do? Um, a, a multiplication. Why? Because, Why did you do multiplication? Because three can go into two. And... Not into, but what's the other word? Oh, Just... I forgot. Multiply, right? You're just oh, multiplying yeah. it together. Why are you multiplying? Because yeah. multiplying is a fast way to add, yes. right? <laughs> and let's say cash did the same thing. One more, Miguel. Tell me a little bit. Did you do some multiplication as well? Yeah. And why did you multiply two times three? Because there's three sides. Oh, now that's a great explanation. There are three sides, so that's where the three comes from. Mm -hmm. And where's the two come from? Um, from the yards. Yeah, that's it, from the yards. Now, take your answer that you have here of six yards. Like most people got that. And ladies, we're going to pick on you over here in a minute. How many feet would that be? Instead of putting out six <gasps> yards, how many feet? I know you know, but you got to show me. Oh. Oops. Write it down and explain it. I'm going to see how these ladies are doing over here. <laughs> you can do some addition or you can do some multiplication just like we did earlier and I really like it how you show me what's going on there we started with six yards six yards is the perimeter of the triangle and then we want to know how many feet is that oh Marilyn tell me a little bit about what you did here we had six there's your six yards and then you stuck another three in there where did this three come from I just Okay, you did multiplication. I like your multiplication. You got your six here, right? But then this three, because there's three feet in a yard, right? I like this 18. Now, can you do me a favor and write down the, uh, the measurement at the end there? It's 18 what? Feet. 18 something there. Okay, back over here to these ladies. Anybody do it differently? Did you multiply? Oh, we got some multiplication here for Maddie. Mm -hmm. That's it. Got some multiplication. Oh, here's a whole lot of addition. And I really like it when people tend to do a little bit different than multiplication. You got some addition. How many threes are you going to write down there? You got four of them so far, but how many do you need? What's his number? That's it. So write down all six of them so we can see all of them. Because it's another way to do it. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Yeah, there you go. Now, if you add all those up together, you're going to get how many yards are in the perimeter of that shape. So, to find the perimeter, you can do addition or you can do multiplication. To find from the, area, from the, the perimeter that you have, it's in yards, you want to go to feet, you can do addition or you can do multiplication. Now, let's take that knowledge. Are you ready? The challenge next is draw a square. Okay. Okay? You can erase your triangle, draw a square. Now, this one's going to be faster because you already have the method you need to use. We won't be long on this one because I know you'll be quick and you'll know exactly what to do. Draw a square. Each side of the square is three yards long. Ah, some people label just one side. Some people label two sides. Some people are labeling all four sides. I think it's a really good idea to label. You know what's coming next? What is the perimeter of your square? What's the distance all the way around? And you can do it quick. Good, I'm glad you have it. Hold on to it right there. Don't say it out loud. Good. I'm glad you have it. Don't say it out loud. Oh, some people are adding. Some people are multiplying. We're going to all say it together in 10 seconds. Finish up your numbers. Make sure you have your measurement at the end. Here we go. All together. Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is 12. 12. Good job. All right. So last thing, take your 12. How many feet is that? Right? You can add it up. Or you can multiply. How many feet in the yard? Twelve. No, not twelve. How many feet in the yard? Three. Look right here. There it is, right there. Good, you got it. See what you can do. Take your twelve times three again. You can do it. I like that's a great place to start. Now times three again, Max. You can do it. 
In 10 seconds, we're gonna all do this one together too. Can we do it? 12 times three, 12 times three, 12 times three, you can do it. Here it comes, and don't forget, there's feet at the end, right? Make sure it's the times. Oh. Yep, 12 times three, times, not, not division, times. Miguel's got it. From way over at the far side of the table, Miguel, what do you got? 36. 36 what? Feet. 36 feet. Nice job. Well done. So we're still learning that multiplication is a short form of adding, and you can either add them all up together or you can multiply them, but the best case scenario is that you draw a picture. There's still more measurement to do over here at Van Horn School. At the moment, though, we're going to have some more math going on in the studio. Always more measurement to go on. Yes. You want to measure anything right now? Nah, don't even worry about that. I'm going to let you choose the problem that you're going to do right now. So you may select 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Um, now you can't look at the paper. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. 9. 9? All right, here we go. Over to the board. Domit read a quarter of the time that Tom read. Tom okay. read only two-fifths of the time that Sasha read. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Sasha read twice as long as Mike. If Mike read five hours, how long did Domit read? Can you read what he read, Dom? So I'll read it all again one more Just, time. All right. Okay. Domit read the quarter, a quarter of the time that Tom read. Okay, a quarter. Tom read only two fifths of what Sasha read. Sasha read twice as long as Mike. If Mike read five hours, how long did Domit read? What automatically information can you grab out of here? The numbers. Okay. And I know that there's one, two, three, about four people. Okay. What would you say was the easiest person to figure out? Um, okay, well, Mike read five hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there's one other person that we can figure out quickly. Sasha? Why? Because it's five times two is ten. Very good. I agree with you. So let's go ahead and put that she read ten hours. So put this one equals ten. So we know that Tom read only two-fifths of what Sasha read. Mm -hmm. How can we find out what two-fifths of ten is? Well, there's two, well, there's five twos and ten. Can you make an equivalent fraction? Mm, yeah. Okay. So if we have two-fifths, What's our numerator? Because you multiply by two. Right. Okay. So how many hours would that be then? Four tenths. Well, but what would four, she, what this is really saying is that she read four out of 10, ten. hours. So how many hours did Tom read then? He read four. Four hours. <coughs> okay, so let's put four hours right there for Tom. So let's again look. We know that Mike read five hours. We know Sasha read ten hours. And we know that Tom read four hours. But now we need to find the main one. Okay. And they read, he read a quarter of what Tom read. He read, well, it says a quarter, so that would be like four divided by four is one. Okay. One hour. And let's find out if we're right or not. Well, are you? You figured it out. How long did Domit read? One hour. There you, there go. you go. Nicely Good done. Job. Congratulations on that. Go ahead and erase the board, and I've got a little something extra special uh -oh. for you. Here we go. Stay over at the board there, young lady because one of the numbers in there was four. And Mary Lou knows where I'm gonna go with this. Oh, yeah. 
Here we go. Put four ready? fours on the board. Okay, put four fours and make sure you leave spaces in between. Now, Minnie, you were explaining earlier that you were working with PEMDAS in order of operations. Mm -hmm. And you're comfortable with this, correct? You, you're comfortable with it, right? You know yeah. the order of operations, right? You know how to multiply, divide, add, subtract, mm -hmm. right? Easy stuff, right? At the last four, put an equal sign. And I would like you to select a number between 7 and 13. Um, 12? All right, put a 12 at the end of the lineup. So I want you to use four fours. Use any mathematical symbols you want. Factorials work. Square root symbols work. Decimals work. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, parentheses, anything at all that you like. But I want you to use the four fours to make that equal 12. What do and you explain mean? to Mary Lou how you're going to do it. And you don't have to rush through this. You've got five minutes. Plenty of okay, time. There you go. Okay. Talk me through this. How would you solve this? Um, I don't know. Well, let's think what you know about fours. How many fours does it take to equal 12? Three. Okay. Use that knowledge. How can you get there using that? Well, mm. what's four plus four? Eight. Plus four. 12. Plus another 4. 16. Mm. So, what's 4 times 4? 16. Okay. Think about that. If we multiply this, right? Mm -hmm. We know that equals 16. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's all the help you're going to give her. Oh, now it's all No up more to you. assistance. I want men to start thinking about okay. this a little bit. Okay, start more. thinking. Okay. And that might not even be the way to go. It's just one idea. There's lots of ideas. So think where you could go with this. Okay. Well, if I subtract 4, then that's 12, but I still have to do the other one. So... And if you want to remove the multiplication symbol, yeah, you, can. you can. You don't have to stay with that. Okay. Think about you could use. Oh, can I give her hints? No, no more. What's the hint? Then well, I'll I'm decide just reminding whether or not you can give her it. what she can use. Well, we went over all that. Okay. Factorial symbols: square root, plus, minus, add, or multiply, divide, parentheses. I know you can do this. That's why I don't want to just tell you how to go ahead and do it. Okay. Um. Factorial. <coughs> do factorial. Now, do you know what factorial means? Uh, kind of, not really. Okay, okay so let Mary Lou help you out with that. Factorial. Okay. That means I'm taking this number and I'm multiplying it all the way down. So if I did a factorial with 5, I would go 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But this is what we're using right here. So multiply those three numbers together, what do you get? Okay, this is 12, 24, 24. Okay, now think about that. If we do this 4 factorial. Wait, this one or uh -huh. this one? Just this one. Okay. Okay, 4 factorial, you get what? 24. 24, now think about that. So can I still like put a sign like yeah. right here? Okay. You could do parentheses if you need to isolate it. Parentheses. What is that all equal together? If you were to add to 12? If you were to add those three together, what is that equal? 12. Okay. All right, sister, Can that's I? enough oh! with your helping over there. Okay. Since this is 24 and then this is 12, just. Dang it. Can't do you're that. on the right track. Okay. You're, you're almost, you're so close. 
If I divide, then it will be 2, but I... What's another operation? Multiply. Would that make sense to multiply? No. Okay. You got, got two it, more choices. I got, it, I got it. There. Now, in the original problem, where are you going to put that subtraction symbol? Yes. That's the, the trick. We need to rewrite this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to... Now I want you to put all of it. We need to see the operations. How are you going to do this with your operations? So you can put things next to each other mm -hmm. between the numbers. And remember, you can use parentheses. And okay, I'm just going to put... So I can put something like right here? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's see if that works. We know this is 24. Okay. And then this is 12. Okay, hold on. Yeah, but, you're going to need but, parentheses but, around here. You, got, you need oh, parentheses yeah. because that's why I was, where I was going with this. It, it wouldn't have come out if you don't put those parentheses. And there you go. Now, Minna, let's say you did not use parentheses. What would that come out to be? That would come out so to be... So say it all the way through. What, what would it come out to be? Uh... Like the yeah, whole just, problem? You just go, right, the whole go problem. from left to right, okay, solve it. Okay, so um, since this would be 24 minus 4, that's 20, plus 4, plus 4, that's plus 8, so it would be 28. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Be and how important parentheses are? Mm -hmm. Or else, if we're, if we're going by order of operation, you're going to come up with a whole different answer. Here, you're isolating, and we know that we need to solve this first, we need to solve this and now we can combine them together, okay? okay? So awesome leave job. the bottom where you rewrote everything, the top two lines and then your factorial, get rid of that. This whole thing? Right, leave okay. the bottom. Okay, so we want, I'm gonna go like this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to. Here, I can do it. You can do it, I'll okay. let you do it. Oh. You have to use the oh. other end though, Minna. Oh, yeah. the back end. oh yeah. there you go. There you go. Ugh. You got it? And then Yes. Hey, that's enough. All right. <laughs> so put four more fours up there. Okay. And go we're going to do this in one minute. Okay. okay. More, four more fours. One this, minute. This one you have to do. Oh, dang. There. And one more. You're going to put an addition symbol between all of them. Put plus. Uh, a plus. Wait, you should. Uh huh. Addition. So put, put plus, plus between all of all them. All of them. Plus. Plus. Okay. Do you know what a square root is? Isn't it where. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that. Okay. Okay, so you're going to put a square root symbol over two of those, and I want you to tell me what that comes out to be. Okay. Okay, talk us through it. What is this equal? What? What's, what's the answer to this? Oh, two. Two. Plus. Two. Plus. Four. Plus. Plus four. Okay. Solve it. Okay. This is 12. There is you go. Now you've way? got two ways yeah. to do 12. And guess how many more there are? Like a lot. 51. A lot. There's a lot more, but we won't make <laughs> you do all of those right now. Hey, we do have one more opportunity to head on out to Van Horn, visit with the Hornets and Scott. Hey, we're back here at Van Horn Elementary, and I want to do one last thing here before we go this afternoon to make sure that students understand that it's a really good idea to draw some pictures sometimes when you're doing a math problem. So we got a little bit of a head start. Everyone's got at least one gallon of milk drawn down, drawn on your board, okay? Yes. And now I want you to, ready? Draw three more right next to it. So you're gonna have a total of four gallons of milk on your board. Now sometimes it takes a little bit longer than you like, but I think it's really important to have a picture of what's going on so at least you can understand what's happening in the problem. And then when I ask you a question about it, it won't be nearly as confusing because you'll be able to see a picture of it. And you can label each one of them. I like how some people are actually drawing the word milk on there. Some people are actually have a different shape, but the shape isn't nearly as important as making sure that you have four physical gallons of milk. Nice job. Yep, got to have four total, right? So you had one. I'm asking you to add three more in there. So far, so good. See, there's a little bit of art in math and a little bit of math in art. Three so far. One more, Maddie. There you go. So you have four total. Now, if you look at the measurement tool that we used at the very top of the page, right, or it's up there on the board if you forgot what it was, how many quarts are in one gallon? 
What does it say? Four. It says four, right? And it's at the top of your page or it's up here on the board. There are four quarts in one gallon. So I want you to label each one of the pictures that you have with what? With a four, right? And you want to put a four what? Four what? Gallons. Not gallons. Four quarts. So write that down. Four quarts over the top of each one, on the bottom of each one, inside of each one, somewhere. I want you to label what each one of them is. Now, with this amazing picture that you've just drawn, I know that you can now do this problem. How many quarts do we have all together? Um, Add them up. Six. Make sure you can. Yeah, write it down. Show me. Six. How you do it? If I ask you to explain, show me what you would do. Some people, I think, are going to do it with addition. Some people might do it with multiplication. But you can instantly see it's a lot easier to do when you have a picture. And make sure you have your final answer that has a label to it, right? So when you get the final answer here, Max, what is the label you want to have on the end here? 16 what? Quartz. Quartz, that's it. So write down quartz. 16 quartz. Cool cocoa cola milk. Yeah. And we still have 16 quartz of that, right? Yeah. I like this right here, Cash. You got four and four and four and four. You even showed this in math about how you can add it all up. So ready? We're going to go backwards now. You got your 16. That's a wonderful way to do it. Let's go backwards. If you have 16 quarts, how many gallons do you have? Show me in math. You have a picture of it. I know that part. But start with 16 and go backwards to gallons. How many quarts in a gallon? One. Four. Good. So you're going to use that four. 16, oh Miguel, wonderful work here. I like this, how you did this. You got your 16 quarts all together, and we're gonna go backwards, like I said here, 16 divided by four. Mm. Wonderful, and at the very end you labeled it. 16 divided by four. 16 divided by four. So when I say go backwards, usually what we ended up doing is getting smaller. All right, we have our final challenge of the day. Erase your quarts of milk. We're gonna draw one more picture. Quarts. Milk. We're gonna make this a real simple picture. It's definitely something you can do, but I want you to see if you can draw this picture and then divide it up into different parts. <gasps> did I just say that? Yeah, you did. Okay. Draw yourself a rope that goes rope? from one side of your board to the other. Just a rope. Like a line? Just a rope. You can draw it a line. You can make it squiggly, whatever it is. Your rope is... Oh, feel the tension. Your rope is 18 feet long. 18 feet? 18 feet long. Better put that 18 on there somewhere. Oh, 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 18 I feet. And what's the question going to be? How many, How many yards? yards? How many yards? That's yards. it. We got to do it quickly. I know you can do it. Now we're going to break it up into different pieces. I even gave you a hint. We're going to divide it up into different pieces. Oh. Uh huh. Oh. Show me. Show me a picture. 18 divided by. Cash, tell me what we're going to divide by. 18 divided by? Three. 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 That's it. Show me. Like 18 this? divided by three. And then draw me a picture. Divide it up into pieces. Divide your rope. Cut your rope into different pieces. Do it. You can do it. That's it. Good job. What's the answer there, Max? What'd you get? What's 18 divided by 3? 18 divided by 6. It is. And you're going to have 6 what? Yards. 6 yeah. yards. Okay. Wonderful job. I love it. Amazing way to do math. I am so amazingly proud of this group right here. If you ever get stuck on a math problem, this group can attest. Just draw a picture. It makes everything a lot easier. At that, we're going to leave these hornets, get back to the studio. All right, thanks Yay. for that. Nice to visit yeah. the hornets out of Van Horn Elementary in Scott and doing all of the different measurements today. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon, as we do most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. And thanks again to Minna. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.